Hello everyone, my name is Zach. I'm the Operation Director for Bridges to Change and today I'm going to bake some soft pretzels. Got into baking a couple years ago, spent a lot of time at work looking at screens. It's a nice way to use your hand to make something delicious out of some really basic ingredients. So I'm going to go through the list of ingredients that we're going to need to make this and then I will make sure to repeat them before adding them when we're actually using them. So first we got some, we have three cups of flour, just plain ordinary flour, one cup of warm water, one half tablespoon of regular table salt, and one tablespoon of yeast. Uh, this is the only ingredient that might be a little tricky for people to find right now. You can buy yeast at the grocery store in the baking aisle. It usually comes in little packets that say Fleischmann's yeast on them. Uh, interestingly, with the COVID-19, people have really been buying a lot of baked goods at the, uh, at the grocery store, the baking supplies. So that one might be a little bit tricky to find. I think right now everyone's taking this uh, social isolation as an excuse to watch the Great British Baking Show and try to bake things. So good luck finding yeast, hopefully everything else uh, you have on at your house. I have a couple other ingredients that go into pretzels that don't always go into other types of bread. There's a small amount of brown sugar. Looks like one half tablespoon, so not very much. Uh, there's also one tablespoon of uh, solid fat. I'm gonna use coconut oil but you can use butter, margarine, lard, vegetable shortening, any sort of oil that is solid. And um, all right, so we're gonna get started here. I'm gonna put in one and a half cups of my all-purpose flour into a bowl. Uh, I guess I should review uh, what equipment you'll need. It's a pretty simple recipe. You just need your basic mixing bowl, a wooden spoon and these will be baked on a just normal baking pan. Now a couple of things that help for protein pretzels is uh, if you have one of these uh, kind of drying sheets for making cookies and stuff, really helpful because we do boil the pretzels so uh, keeps keeps them a little drier. We also will need some plastic wrap. These go in the fridge for an hour before baking. This keeps them from getting dried out. Uh, if you have it, parchment paper is great. It'll keep the pretzels from sticking to the pan. Um, you'll be fine without it. It's not something you really need. Just they might stick a little bit when you bake them. All right, so one and a half cups of flour. And put in the tablespoon of oil here. And the half tablespoon of brown sugar. And I'm gonna to wanna to incorporate this oil into the flour. This is, uh, I like to just use my hands. They make some baking tools for this, but we wanna make sure that all of the oil is kind of evenly dispersed in here. This is a good trick for making biscuits too that require way more oil than these pretzels do. So I'm just gonna kind of use my hand to kind of squish the little beads you'll kind of feel little bits of coconut oil in here and we want to really just sort of mix it together kind of smash those with your fingers so that the oil is evenly dispersed we don't want to bite into a pretzel and have like a glob of coconut oil just sort of in a bite of pretzel All 
All right, that's feeling pretty good. We are gonna need this dough when it's done, so there'll be a little bit of additional smashing. I'm also going to put in my salt, so half a tablespoon of salt. Sort of try to disperse the salt around. And I'm gonna throw in my yeast. So one tablespoon of yeast. Really hard not to make a mess when you're baking. So that is a word of advice that you might drive your roommates a little crazy. Okay, so we got the yeast in here. And now I'm going to add the water. Water should just be like a, not super hot, but definitely warm, like kind of hand washing temperature water. Going to dump this in here. I'm going to use the spoon at first because it's going to be really, really wet. So at this point, we've only added half the flour. So I'm going to kind of mix this. This is just like a big kind of loopy mess right now. And then we're going to add the rest of our flour half a cup at a time. So three, three more of these guys. I'm going to start still just using this spoon because it's still really wet here. For this last one, I'm also going to uh, really douse my hands with the flour, too, because now we're going to knead. So I'm going to have to turn off the screen in a minute because you're not going to want to watch this for 10 straight minutes. But we want to knead this for 10 full minutes. And when you first start, it's still going to be a big kind of clumpy disaster here. The longer you need, the easier it'll get, and the more it'll start turning into just sort of a ball of dough. So you can't really knead this too hard, I don't think. I mean, you can really, really use both hands if you want. I've watched people on some cooking shows, they'll like pick the dough up and slam it down, and they get really into it. So really use your muscles, use your arms, he said, I find this to be kind of a cathartic process. You kind of work out some stress by just really hammering this dough down. So I'm going to hit stop for now, and then I'll be back when this is ready to go.